Hey guys, it is time for another study and fold and I am in a different location than I was last time because I decided to try it here in the living room just to see if I liked it here on the sofa. I don't know if I will or not. I might scoot back a little bit though because I feel like I'm like weirdly positioned. I don't know, but we're going to try this this time. We're using these two books and we are in week 18. No, 19, 19. No, we're in week 18. We're in week 18. I was right. Um, God has not forgotten. And both of the books are talking about, I will probably say this wrong, but Mephibosheth and David. And um, if you did the reading, you know that Mephibosheth is Jonathan's son, Saul's grandson, and... At the time when, well, let me just read some of this to you guys, and then we'll talk. In 2 Samuel 9, we see that how David finds a way to show kindness to Mephibosheth, the son of his best friend Jonathan and the grandson of his worst enemy, Saul. When the nurse caring for the five-year-old Mephibosheth heard that Saul and Jonathan had died in battle, she grabbed the child and ran. In her haste, she dropped him, and both of his feet were broken disabling him permanently. Back then, if you were disabled, you would have a hard time earning a living, living even harder than today. We all know that. And many people wouldn't be able to see past your differences to appreciate your worth. Because this happened to him as a child, Mephibosheth spent most of his life not being able to recognize his own value. When we see him in 2 Samuel 9, he's a grown man living in someone else's house in a small town called Lodabar, unable to provide for himself self in first samuel 20 14 through 15 jonathan it says some things that jonathan said but that part right there i want to go to the bible and i want to read a little bit more than what it shows in there um i do have it marked 20 it's talking about 14 and 15 which we'll go over. But um, this is a point where that David is fleeing from Saul. Saul is after him constantly. It's like so crazy. And we did do a study on this. But Saul is one minute he's loving David. The next minute he hates him. And he wants to do everything in his power to get rid of David. And he's chasing him. And he's hunting him down. Like you know. And he wants to kill him. Well. Jonathan is his best friend, but Jonathan is also Saul's son, next in line as heir to be king. And I've heard people say, you know, I don't understand why Jonathan would do this, why he would protect David, because Jonathan knew God's plan, is what I think. That's my opinion. But we can all be in line for something really wonderful. But know God's plan and know it's not us that's supposed to be in that spot. Why am I getting ahead of myself? I don't know. But anyways, um, I'm going to start in verse 11. It says, and, uh, let's see. No, 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 no. Let's see. Where do I want to start? I had figured it out. Let's just start at one. David fled from Naoth in Ramah and it came to Jonathan and asked, what have I done? What did I do wrong? How have I sinned against your father so that he wants to take my life? Jonathan said to him, no, you won't die. Listen, my father doesn't do anything great or small without telling me. So why would he hide this matter from me? This can't be true. So David said, see, Saul tells Jonathan everything, but this he's not telling Jonathan. And Jonathan is saying, why would he hide this from me that he wants to kill you? So, But David said, your father certainly knows that you have come to look favorably on me. He, sa he has said, Jonathan must not know of this or else he will be grieved. David also swore, as surely as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, there is but a step between me and death. Jonathan said to David, whatever you say, I will do for you. So David told him, look, tomorrow is the new moon, and I'm supposed to sit down and eat with the king. Instead, let me go, and I'll hide in the field until the third night. 
if your father misses me all, at all, say, David urgently requested my permission to quickly go to th his town, Bethlehem, for an annual sacrifice there involving the whole clan. If he says good, then your servant is safe. But if he becomes angry, you will know he has evil intentions. So David is telling Jonathan, if he if, if he acts this way, everything's all good. I can come back home. Everything's fine. But if he acts this way, you know he's keeping things from you too. Deal faithfully with your servant, for you have brought me into the covenant with you before the Lord. If I have done anything wrong, then kill me yourself. Why take me to your father? No, Jonathan responded. If I ever find out my father has evil intentions against you, wouldn't I tell you about it? So David asked Jonathan, Who will tell me if your father answers you harshly? He answered David, Come, let us go out to the field. So both of them went out to the field. By the Lord, the God of Israel, I will sound out my father by this time tomorrow or the next day. If I find out that he is favorable towards you, will I not send for you and tell you? If my father intends to bring evil on you, may God punish Jonathan and do so severely. If I do not tell you and send you away, so you may go in peace. So he's saying, if I don't tell you he's wanting to hurt you, may God may God take my life. That's what Jonathan is saying. Um, where was I at? Okay. May the Lord be with you as he is built. Okay. Then this is verse 14 and 15. If I continue to live, treat me with the Lord's faithful love. But if I die, don't ever withdraw your faithful love from my household. Not even when the Lord cuts off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant. This is 16. Made a covenant with the house of David saying, May the Lord hold David's enemies accountable. Jonathan once again swore to David in his love for him because he loved him as he loved himself. So he loved him just like he loved himself. He loved him as a as a friend, as a brother, as, you know, he is an important part of Jonathan's life and he does not want Jonathan David to be harmed. So in that part it says all this stuff. But years later, David has not forgotten the promise he made. David had promised that he would take care of Jonathan's family. And, of course, David knew that Jonathan had a son. So it said, um, when David engages with Mephibosheth, he says to him, don't, don't be afraid. I, am to, I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. So, Mephibosheth is expecting David to do him harm because his grandfather did him harm or tried to do him. Well, he did harm him. He made him run all over the place. He scared him. He caused fear in his heart. He caused very big issues. But Mephibosheth is, he's afraid because his nurse had taken him away as, and as a child he was probably taught David is going to come after Saul's family. That's probably what he was taught. Now, I don't know that, but that's just my thought. Mephibosheth has always felt like nothing. He was crippled. People who were crippled didn't have much. They had to beg. They, they didn't have anything, really. Just to eat, they were begging on the streets. In fact, in verse 8, he asked David, who is your servant that you should show the kindness of a dead, kindness to a dead dog like me? He very possibly wants to be forgotten about, wants to be forgotten because of the wicked things his grandfather Saul did. But David wants to bless him because of the promise he made to his father Jonathan. Mephibosheth can't fathom anyone showing this type of favor, but God has plans beyond our, his comprehension. God has not forgotten you either. It was has nothing to do with you or anything that you've done, right or wrong. It's all because of God's favor. Even if it seems against the odds, there is still favor over your life. The blessings that God has for you are coming in spite of you, not because of you. 
They're in spite of you, not because of you. The truth is, we're all flawed, but God looks past our, those flaws and still supplies our needs. He even gives us some of our wants. God still has you on his mind. Like Mephibosheth, you may not feel favored, but you are highly favored. You are, may not feel blessed, but you are better than blessed. That's why I like this book. She is so good. Um... And pretty much the same kind of situation in this book, saying that God will take care of you and things like that. Um, it says at the end, whatever you are in need of, whatever you're praying for, have confidence that God has not forgotten you. Just be ready when it's your turn. So, I want to talk to you guys about God's favor. Now, I have talked to y'all about times in my life when I was not following God, but... He still blessed me beyond measure. He blessed me in ways that, you know, I knew that it wasn't anything that I did. I knew that, that I didn't deserve those blessings. This is my hang-up pile. <laughs> um, God has blessed me in so many ways that, you know, kept me safe, kept my children safe, kept my husband safe, kept things the way that they were supposed to be even in spite of my sin even in spite of my mistakes and my flaws God still took care of me and he does not forget his promises and his promise is that he will be faithful to us even in our wickedness wickedness now that doesn't mean that everything's going to be wonderful all the time because, I mean, things will happen that are not good, even to the most saintly person. Bad things are going to happen. Whenever um, my daddy got sick, I was following God. I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing. But it was like the one of the most wonderful people I knew was being, t you know, taken away. He was hurting. He was in pain. He was... You know different things was happening that I didn't understand but I knew the whole time God was faithful he was going to do what was the best thing now did I like it no I didn't was I happy about it no I wasn't but I had to accept it and there's been times since then whenever I wasn't because that after my daddy passed away is when I fell away from God and um, went down the wrong path for a while and um, even during that he was faithful and I, I saw those times and I knew it was God that was doing the things but I was still being stubborn I was still being resistant to what God wanted for me and what I was supposed to be doing so even in our times when we don't think we are worthy when we're definitely not worthy and I'm not saying Mephibosheth was not worthy but even in those times whenever we feel like we don't deserve it God is going to give us the grace that we that we need He's going to give us the love that we deserve. Because we all do deserve love. Um, because we are all God's children. Whether we see it or not. Even an atheist is God's child. And they deserve love. But. They don't. Which this study is not about this. Um, unless they give their life to the Lord, they're not going to get all of the blessings. They're not going to get, you know, what they... Ultimately, they're... How am I supposed to say this? They will have blessings here on earth. And God will bless their lives. And I believe He does that in hopes that they will see that. And they will see that it's Him. But they won't get the ultimate blessing. i put it that way. That's the only way I know to say it. Um, but I know there's times when we all feel unworthy of the blessings 
like Mephibosheth. He did not think that David should treat him well. He just didn't feel like that David should give him his grandfather's land. He didn't think that he should be eating at the king's table. He didn't think that he should be blessed and taken care of. But David had made that promise to Jonathan that he would take care of his family, Jonathan's family, and he did not forget. And God's not going to forget the promises he made, and which the only way we'll know the promises, as I've said a lot of times, the only way we'll get to know God is if we stay in the Bible. The only way we'll know what he says or what he thinks is if we stay in the Bible. So if you want to know what God's promises are, study, read, pray, you know, that kind of thing. But I feel like I've gotten off track. I don't know what, even where I'm going or what I've said. But I feel like a lot of us, like, will be in this pit and we don't understand why we're there. And sometimes we put ourselves there. And then we'll get blessings even while we're in the pit. And we won't understand why we got the blessings. Because we're not where we're supposed to be. And sometimes we can be in the pit and still do everything we're supposed to be doing. But there's other circumstances that are causing us to be there. Um, I really feel like I've gotten off track. I really feel like I don't know. Let me kind of back up and regroup a little bit because now my thoughts are everywhere. I do have a slight headache today, but I really wanted to do this because I was excited about it. And now I don't know where I'm going. Um, okay. I had to turn the camera off for a minute because I, I just felt like I got way off track and I don't even know how to get back on track. What I want to say is, um, maybe I have said all I'm supposed to say. Maybe that's the thing. But whenever we're down in the valley, God does not forget us. He won't forget us. And as long as we keep trusting in Him, He will take us out of that. He'll put us back on the mountain. He'll get us back up where we should be. Or where we, you know, where we are okay and everything. Even whenever we don't feel like we deserve it. Because there have been a lot of times in my life that I did not deserve any sort of, like, blessings. I did not. But God didn't see it that way. He saw that I was his child. That I was lost and he knew that I would come back and he knew that I deserved the blessing and I do believe all those blessings that he did give me whenever I was in a very bad place that those blessings and me seeing where they came from I believe that brought me back to him if that makes sense um, and God's good. He's going to remember us. No matter how much we do, He's going to remember us. And all we have to do is just reach out to Him and listen to Him and do what He says in His Word. And like I say all the time, the only way we're going to know what He says is if we read the Word. We've got to stay in the Word to know the word and we've got to be diligent we can't just you know read it sometimes and not the other times or read it whenever we we can't pray only whenever we are in a situation where we feel like we need God's help I mean a prayer can be a prayer of thanksgiving it doesn't have to be asking God for something 
it can be thanking him for something. And so when I say pray every day, it doesn't mean that you are asking him for something every day. It means you are talking to him every day. As I said before, like you would a friend. And that's the way I talk to God. Like he's my friend because he is my friend. Um, I've heard other people say, you know, God's not a friend. He's not your friend. Yes, he is. To me, he is. Because... He takes care of me, and that's what friends do, is they take care of each other. He loves me, and that's what friends do. They love each other. They um, they watch out for each other, and he watches out for me. Now, I don't have to watch out for him. I've got the easy side. I don't have to do <laughs> any of the hard parts. He does all the hard parts. So I got a, a bonus with that situation. We all do. Anybody who follows God does. These are mostly Noah's clothes, it looks like. Um, which is fine. But, I don't know. I just feel like today's study, I kind of got off. But I think y'all still understand my crazy rambles. And y'all get something from it anyway. But just remember that even whenever you feel like you don't deserve something from God, He says you do. If he says, if he gives it to you. Even if you feel like you're not worthy of something. He says you are. If he gives it to you. Because there's so many blessings. Like, Mephibosheth felt like he didn't deserve the love of David. God said different. And it's all because of a promise that was made years before or yeah years before because Mephibosheth was a grown man and he was five when his daddy died and maybe that promise this is something I wanted to say and I had forgotten until I got back to this maybe that promise that you had um that God made you years ago maybe it's not time but God has not forgotten that's what I kept trying to remember and I couldn't remember. That promise, it's still there. God is still, you know, you're still on God's mind is the point of what I'm trying to say. He, he didn't forget you. He didn't forget that he made a promise. He didn't forget that, I'm going to put Noah's clothes with Jeff's. Hopefully I didn't do that too much today. <laughs> if I did, they'll figure it out. But, um, yeah, you're always on his mind. You're always on his heart. You're always important to him. And anything he's ever said to you, he remembers. So, hopefully, I made some sense. I did get my clothes folded. I have to get these hung up. And I hope that you get something from these little studies. And I know some of you like them. And I like this a lot better than the other way. So next time will be the drought is almost over. And it will be 1 Kings 1 through 22. So 22 chapters we'll be reading over the next. Well, it gives you seven days. But um, that's when they'll be the next time. So I will see you guys. Not the next study. I'll see you tomorrow. For the next video. I hope this made sense. I feel like I got really off. And discombobulated. I don't know why I did that today. But hopefully. It was God. Stopping me from saying something I wasn't supposed to. Because he does that too. <laughs> he makes sure we are. Well. If we allow him to, he makes sure we're in line. <laughs> and I think he shuts my mouth a lot of times, and sometimes he opens my mouth. Sometimes he says things, I mean, he, sometimes I say things to people that I feel like maybe that was God speaking through me because someone needed to know something because I might not have said it otherwise. You know, that kind of thing. And I'm not saying he's always using me for that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying everything I say is God talking. Definitely is not. <laughs> Absolutely.
absolutely not always but I feel like sometimes he does use us to speak truths to other people that they need to hear and I do believe that he has done that with other people with me a lot of times that it was a message from God that um, I was able to hear because someone allowed God to use them so anyway maybe today was a better study than I thought these are just like little quick let's think about this you know kind of things is what I want it to be but remember always that God has not forgotten you no matter how low you are right now God has not forgotten you stay in your word do not miss a day if you can and if you do miss a day that's all right you don't have to sit down and read it you can listen on an app and someone else read it to you you can listen from a CD an mp3 you can listen to it on your computer your um, tablet your phone or you know just whatever your smartphone of course not your house phone I don't think that works but unless you have somebody calling you and reading it to you but the pups are over here they got up I think they want to go out so I guess I need to go but don't feel guilty if you don't read every day you can listen and um, you can always start over just don't condemn yourself for something you shouldn't be condemned for that's another thing but God does always remember all of his promises to you and all of his promises will happen so Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it. If you like this, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like my channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload. Share with a friend if you'd like to, but most importantly, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're doing. If you have any prayer requests, leave those down below as well. I do pray for you. If you have anything that you want me to praise God for you with, or praise God with you for, yeah. In other words, if you have a praise report, I would like to know because hearing about the things God is doing in other people's lives is absolutely awesome. It, it's just awesome because God is awesome. So, again, thank you for hanging out with me today. And remember, don't take any wooden nickels and be sweet.